In this video today, we're going to be heading to Adrian's property. You may remember or have seen Adrian's fish room on YouTube. I did a tour of his actual fish room a couple of months ago and his room was so popular. But for this video, I wanna head back and I wanna show you more of the acreage and the property. I'm gonna show you the birds, the bees and everything in between. And we can have a little bit of a closer look at what he does outside of the fish room. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably also going to want to keep a lookout for On Keeping Fish Simple. They're going to be uploading a video of Adrian's fish room again and giving you a more detailed update of what's actually going on in the fish room. Without further ado, let's get into the video. To start off the afternoon, Adrian was upstairs doing some final filming with Nick and I just had a bit of a look around the fish room at some of my favourite fish that are in it. Then AB came back downstairs and we started off the afternoon with him showing me some peacock cichlids that his friend Tony had brought him. So they're Alanacara uh, Cobwee, I think they are. I took them over to him as babies to grow out and these are them coming back to go into the tank to see if I can breed him again. That female that's hiding above the... Um, well, she's just hidden right now behind that, she's gone. Um, she's been missing for you know, five or six months, it's been forever. It's just been a long time since these guys, in fact, went over to Tony's. She just disappeared and there's one little baby girl in there that I thought, oh, well, at least I've got a pair still. And then when I cleaned out the tank yesterday, see my sump's broken, see how the, it's come away from the edge and the glass is bowing. But I found her in the sump near the pump and I haven't fed her at all, like it's been months and I, I thought she was completely gone. So. I rescaped that tank and that tank last night and stuck him in, in there. And so he's got his wife back last night and um, now his kids. All right, so we'll get these guys in the tank. <clears throat> Hopefully he won't um, harass them. Are you ready for the release? One, two. That female's out now. Yeah. Well, that's actually mum. So that's seeing her kids again Aww. for the first time. You watch, it'll bring Dad out too, I'm sure. Yes. And look, obviously, the plecos have bred in there. Huh. Bloody things. See the colours on them? Yeah. Might even... A bit of blue on that one. There might even be a boy. Oh, Alright. Oh, have a quick. So, AB is going to show me some of the birds in the bird aviary. And I am. some of the chooks as well. Cool, let's go cool. and do it. And some bees maybe. And some bees, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Nah. I really don't know what the actual reason is. Yeah, the cooker, another one up here. And the butcher bird's up here. The, um, the kookaburras take liberties. My dad was cooking a steak on the barbecue and he put it on, went inside to put the plate inside and come out and the kookaburra took off with the steak. Yeah. I was just thinking of another story with the kookaburra. Yeah. I had my pond out the front. Um, one of them swooped down once I, I didn't have a net on it for years and it swooped down and got one of my largest goldfish and I was inside and I could hear this and I just it was just unusual and I was wondering what the tapping was and I come out and he was he had the he had him on that branch up oh, there hitting it. banging him trying to kill it trying to kill it to eat and then he swallowed it whole so yeah that so, would have been horrifying it, to see it wasn't like good it, it wasn't good but I also liked the cooker I was like ah so anyway yeah oh that, my was, gosh. that was a little devastating how's it go guys <coughs> So you've got the um, the pink Roseburg parrots. Can I go in there? You can, yeah, come on in. <clears throat> so we built this little Avery, Dad and I. That's because you've got the zip camera. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're everywhere in here. So um, all the different finches. So they come into this, it's a, you know, it's a draft proof in here. There's no... There's no way it gets wet or draft, and we've got we can open up the louver windows in here so that in summertime, it, you know, the ventilation goes right through. But in wintertime, this is as warm as all get out. And there's little quails we have on the ground as well, which you'll see. But they go through this pipe here. Oh. I've, got, I've got a pipe where they run through oh my gosh. from in there to That's outside, so and cute. yeah, so it, there's no drafts coming through over nighttime for the birds, you know. Yeah. And then you can see all the the different parrots there and. Um, to get out here, it is you do have to step over oh, that. But we can go in. You can, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you can get over there. Oh God. Yeah, they they do go nuts, but that's normal. Are they all um like hand raised or? Uh, yeah. So there's no wild courts here. They're all definitely Avery bred birds. 
and then um, they'll settle down. They, they just, we're, you know, they, we block off their flight path when we come through the door and that freaks them out a bit. But, but you see, um, they, they strip everything and you see down here, there's, I had um, frog bit, I've had um, duckweed, I've had every type of plant you can think of growing in here and the birds just eat it. They just pull it all apart, every last bit, every last bit of duckweed. Um, so I've got the, like a bog filter set up, sediment chamber in the bottom and then various levels of gravel and biomedia up the top and it's just that barrel. So that then comes out through a fake rock front and then you see I originally put cherry shrimp in here so you can see all the cherries in there and then uh, some blue Madaka rice fish and they're bred in here as well. The only difficulty is having to feed them every day so I throw food through the wire every day into the uh, into the water and it comes around but it's growing it's, it's sort of grown in really well the now that that moss is going I think the shrimp will just go nuts and they're really good color um, how dark these guys are so and it's hollow under here so they can get under there with the pump but the birds land here they drink they bathe they do all the the stuff that they like to do is there a quail around there I yeah love the quail. yeah they're very cute they are very cute nice with a bit of lemon pepper a bit of lemon and pepper. <laughs> With quail. Oh, <laughs> um, no. Birds, I've got the rock so they can come down. They'll, they'll bathe in here every day and you can see over here it's shallow enough for them to get into oh. the water so oh. they can get from that level to that level and yeah. over here and they just dip in there and do their thing, you know, so they'll fly straight past you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the birds. That's the birds, yeah. And yep. then off to see the chooks. Off to see the chooks. Right, let's go. The ponds haven't changed much since you were here, but um, we'll walk past them. But it's really um, a work in progress over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to landscape all out here and fix all this up. Um, now I've got some time off, but you'll see, you might get even um, a bit better footage than before because this has got the um, tiger madakas mm -hmm. in it. I'll grab my polarized lens as well. Yeah. The blue Madaka, platinum blue Madaka rice fish. Nothing in that one at the minute, although I'll turn the air back on. So this one has got my uh, the, the koi sword line that I'm breeding. So again, you'll get some really good underwater stuff if you have a have your GoPro. Um, so we'll put the chickens away and get out before it's dark. Um, this one is Chinese white clouds, and both the white and black versions. And this one, from back here without the glare, you can see the orange Madaka rice fish in there. And there's heaps of babies. Like that's a, that's one of those ones that you'll, everywhere you see in there, the speckles of babies. So are these the IBC tubs you were setting up last time? That's right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. So I've got another one of these green tubs up here. I love these goldfish. Yeah, wow. so these guys, some of them, are, the black one in here is 25 years old. Um, so this exact green tub I've got up there, I'm gonna put down here so it cascades from this one into that one and then into that one. There he is, 25 years old. Wow. Is this where the kookaburra got the goldfish from? Yep, yeah. uh, I, but it was in this container. Uh. <clears throat> and no, I had no nets on them at all. And yeah, that was the last time. So then I got them out. That was motivated me to get them into here. And you'll see I've got swords breeding all through here as well. But the goldfish are beautiful. Um, I just know that, the, that they'll get smashed by the, the cookers, unfortunately. But they are kingfishers, you expect that, you know, don't you? Yeah. We'll have a look at the bees while it's still light and then the chickens will go away. They do put themselves away, chickens, which I think is awesome. If, um, so it's low like, maintenance? Yeah, low maintenance, just feed them. And if you have feeders and um, water set up from there, just easy. And I, I was, um, I watched a clip the other day that was talking about how if, if three, <laughs> Hello, Cluck. So uh, three homes, basically all of, the, they can reduce a massive amount of their landfill just by having chickens, all the food waste and food scraps. And they, they eat pretty much anything, but of course it's, you know, they eat what you eat. And <laughs> yeah, thank you. We'll have a look at the, um, at the bees first and I'll get you to stand over to the left over here. So if you sort of stay somewhere around here, you should be fine. <clears throat> They're pretty okay if you sort of know what to do with the, with the hives, but also just reading the energy of the bees. They're calm, they're going in and out. When they're swarming and buzzing and they're just big grips of them, you don't go and take the tops off and do all the rest of it. But the great thing about these is you don't need to take the top off <laughs> to see 
inside the lid. So they're filling up the cells at the moment. They fill up the center frames, so they run lengthways this way, and then they'll move out to these windows. So there's also another window over here. And these guys are doing the same thing. So they're obviously starting to fill the middle of the frame there. But this is a flow hive, if you haven't seen one before. And the bottom is a brood chamber, is the brood box. And it's set up just for the bees to breed, to, you know, um, to, to, um, to create new queens, send them off and for new hives to um, eat, to store honey to eat and everything else. The top section is actually set up so that with a turn of a key, it'll, it'll crack the chambers inside when you've got honeycomb cells there manufactured. And when you crack the key, it turns them like that and all the honey flows down the channels and out of tap. So basically all I do is put a tap on the back of this honey hive and then when I want honey, I just fill it up because you can tell how noisy he is. Yeah. So that starts about 3 a.m. So it's like, that's why you can't wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's like, he just goes nuts, right? So um, when we're on rural property, so there's no problems with having a, a, a rooster, but it's still, personally, it sucks when you, you know, three o'clock in the morning. So what I did was I got a, um, uh, it's like an A-frame of the seedling raising uh, greenhouses and I screwed some sheet metal iron to the bottom of it and then I put um, uh, moving blankets and foam uh, lids from our, from our fish boxes, Tone, and I put it all over it and then I've covered it with moving blankets so it's like insulated and I put him in there every night and I would say it comes down by two thirds of the decibels. I don't hear him at all, like, in, I only hear him when I wake up on cue, come on. We can, come on in. They won't hurt you at all. You don't need to shut the gate, they're fine. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Oh, in you go. A bit sus. This one's a wine dot. Blue, blue eggs. Blue eggs, are Aracana. So the eggs are blue out of these ones. Blue Aracana. Blue Aracana. You coming in, Tone? They're pretty calm. I like chickens. Um, I know, come on. So he's, he's very tame. He's actually quite a nice, quite a nice boy for a rooster. So he's been handled a lot. So he was hit by a car. Yeah, so that's how he broke his toe. You see there? So that's that one there. So um, and he lost all the feathers on his back, but my daughter rescued him and said, can we keep him? And I couldn't have kept him if he was as loud as, he, as we've heard him outside, but he just goes in here now. And he's quite happy in here. He's the king of the roost, as it were. And he gets his own food. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. There's enough uh, roosters in here, mate. No, we're just killing the rooster. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're just going to knock him over. I'm going to develop it so I've actually just got a lid and I can actually... I thought about buying a... Um, a um, freezer. Turning on its side, just so that's the door. Put some holes in it and then have this soundproof freezer. So, but, you know, of a night time... This is what I do every night. I come out and put him to bed. Um, and he's got enough light because he still sort of sees through here so he's not completely in the dark. But yeah. at you know, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., um, it's still quite quite dark. And that's just all muffled. It's, okay. I would say coming down by two no. thirds of decibel. No. You know, I spoke um, to you. And these guys. No, no. Yeah, thank no. you. Off you go. Um, that's them done for the night. Nice. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the birds and the chooks and everything. Okay, well, what I might do now is um, go and get some B-roll of everything. Absolutely, so we can yeah. we add some close-up footage in. I'll put the barbecue on and cook some dinner for us. After we finished looking at the chickens, we were ready to go and start having our barbecue. But before we did that, AB just had a couple of things that he wanted to put into some fish tanks. So we headed down to the fish room and got some footage of adding those guys into the fish tank. Gold Danios from Nick's shop up in... Brisbane. If you're a local, you should definitely go and check out some of the fish up there. Um, these are golden danios, and I want them as dither fish for just over these gold oscillatus, and I'm hoping that they'll also pick at some of the algae there as well. All right. There you go. 
Yeah, I thought that. Gold on gold. I thought it's exactly right. I thought I'd keep the gold theme to that tank going, the gold on gold. And so where did you get these from? from? So these ones were a, a gift, or Ross bought them up um, for me today from RC Aquariums. So I'm um, actually I'll get the Sabrosa tank out and I'll get them all out in one go. All right. Here they go. So I'm gonna try to get them so they come out into the. That colour Ross has been breeding for ages, so I'm hoping that they'll just sort of breed true then all the way through. And I've got that colony going. The black shrimp in there. If you even turn that camera around to the back of it, there, I'll. Uh, you can see the. Oh, you're talking about in there? Yep. Ah. Yep. There's black shrimp. I was like, AP, I don't think it's going to <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, and if you look around the front there, you'll see the black shrimp have gone nuts in there with the tiger darios, which is really surprising. I didn't expect them, you know. Yeah. I thought they were little predators, you know. Yeah, they look good in there. I'll be able to see them. I thought the yellow and the white would actually... It'll look really yeah, nice. Yeah, it'll stand out really well. It's like Christmas for me, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Literally. Literally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I hope that you've really enjoyed seeing this video and seeing a bit of an update of AB's fish room as well. As always, it's a pleasure to have you come and check out the place. It's nice that you like it as much as I do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a it's been a bit of a shock that that's the case, but I love it. So yeah, you're welcome anytime to come back. Yeah, and but check it's not just I who loves it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Half a million people yeah, who nice. seem to really like it. Yeah, so. yeah really good. I'm, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing us again and everything. Thank you. And you're more than welcome. I'm sure, we'll see you again soon yeah, in the new I can't year wait as well. To see your video. Oh, you will for sure. Yeah. 100%. Awesome. Come out. Yep. Can you scare them back? Yep. Hey, little quails. Oh, back the way. <laughs> no. I was, I was thinking Go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can you scare them back? <laughs> hey. Oh, sorry, man. Did it try to bite you? No. Oh. Oh, they can fly. Mm. Barely. Whoa. All right. All right. <laughs>